This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this big fella here is the Dell XPS 17. Specifically, this is the 2022 model, or model 9720. As you might guess, just from looking at it already, it's using the same casing and design as the previous generation. So we're on Gen 3 now of this design and of the introduction of the supersized XPS, being the 17-inch model. Uh, what's new here, obviously, is going to be Intel 12th generation CPUs, which make a significant difference in performance in this model. We reviewed the last gen model with the Core i7, which this has a Core i7 as well, so make it fair. And with multi-core particularly improvements, we saw 23 to sometimes 50% improvement depending on test. And the single core performance is about 14% better. That's not cheap Cheetos. We're going to look at it now. So to continue talking about performance, if you're looking at Geekbench 5, that's where you see a 50% multi-core improvement. If you're looking at Cinebench R23, that's where you're seeing like a 23, 24% improvement. In more diverse tests like PC Mark 10 that measures a whole subsystem of things, including the storage speed and all that sort of thing, and then you're looking at more like the single core performance gains of 14%. Uh, so overall, that isn't bad, especially for a laptop that doesn't have any worse battery life or run any hotter, or any louder. So Intel 12th generation CPUs, when done right, like here, can actually be worth the go. And obviously, AMD Ryzen fans, sorry, the XPS line has been Intel and will be Intel for the foreseeable future. Obviously, this goes in line with the XPS 13 and 15, so you've got your choice of three different sizes now, the 17-inch being the live and large model. So while the XPS 15 is more like the size of the 16-inch MacBook Pro competitor, this one's bigger, so I don't really see it as a direct competitor, but you might. Ultimately, there is going to depend on whether you want Windows or Mac OS, though, given M1 ARM architecture means you don't run full x86 native programs anymore. Yeah, you get the idea there. For displays, we have a full HD plus or 4K plus display options. Both of them are 500 nits, yay that. And these are 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which has become a standard thing for the XPS line. And that's a good thing, yeah? So the full HD plus is full sRGB coverage and it's non-touch. So it's gonna have a warm matte finish. We have the 4K plus display. So we're looking at a touch screen here, a little more glossy, but it has a good anti-reflective coating on it. So it doesn't act like a crazy mirror. You know, you can see it pretty well. And obviously the, the high brightness is gonna well, do a good job. The display, the 4K Plus display, is really very impressive. I have to say, it's a sharp made panel. It's an IPS class display. Maybe technically it might be IGZO for those of you who are geeky about display panels. And the color accuracy on this is some of the best that I've seen out of the factory. You know, the low bars are lower when they're better, but usually you don't see where almost no bar is showing. The only thing I would say is the gamma is a little odd. Instead of 2.2, it's 2.3, but if you can achieve that kind of color accuracy, I'm okay with that. And contrast at like 750 to one is quite good for an IPS display as well. So well done there. And I don't expect the full HD plus display to be a slouch anyway. That's 1920 by 1200 resolution. Again, bright, full, sRGB, and it's going to help your battery life a lot. Even Dell says there's going to be like a three to four hour difference between them when it comes to that. So uh, keep that in mind. You know who you are and what you need to do. We do have full Adobe RGB coverage here and 98% of P3 as well. So for those of you who are content creators and perhaps still working for print mediums, which is where you typically need the full Adobe RGB coverage, you've got that here in space. This is a creator's laptop. You can get it with an RTX 3050 or an RTX 3060. We have the 3060 or the base model, because you know Dell, you can always, so they can have a very low starting price to have a totally uh, castrated model, which is a Core i5 and only integrated graphics here. But anyway, despite the fact you get those GPU options there, they're well, because they're low to mid-range for a gaming laptop, right? But uh, this 3060 is 65 watt. That's not a lot compared to a gaming laptop. So this isn't really meant for all out high performance gaming. It's not that it's going to melt down. I mean, we did play some games on it and even doing graphics benchmarks, the thermals on this were pretty good and the heat and the noise and all that sort of thing. Not very loud, not burning hot to the touch. Uh, if you're playing things like Apex Legends, you know, the things that are less demanding compared to something like Cyberpunk, you'll have a better time obviously with those titles, but it is more for creators. For those of you who are using Adobe Premiere, who are doing Blender work, that sort of stuff. And it excels at that. Certainly for Photoshop, I mean, yeah, it's got more than the horsepower you need, but the display is very nice for that. 
Speaking of gaming though, if, for those of you who are looking for something that has got more game, there is the Razer Blade 17 inch model, uh, equally as expensive as this. Speaking of which, this starts at around 1850, again for that mm, wimped out model, full HD plus core, i5, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and no dedicated graphics. The model we have with the 4K display, the core i7, and 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte PCIe 4 SSD in the RTX is around $2,900. So ouch, maybe wait for sales, July 4th sale, whatever country you're in, whatever sales you have, you know what I mean, because it's pretty pricey. Yeah, speaking of the RAM and the SSDs here, you still have two RAM slots, so that's good. You can go up to 64 gigs of RAM if you want. If you buy it from Dell, you can start as low as eight, which I don't recommend on something that's meant to be a powerful machine, and it's DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM. You got two M.2 SSD slots, so world's your oyster there for some storage expansion. The lowest you can get from Dell is a 512 gig SSD, and I believe they go up to two terabyte SSDs, and you can get the second slot populator. Do it yourself later, because it's easy enough to do. In fact, let's take a look at the internals. So here are the internals, uh, same architecture as last year again. Remove some Torx T5 screws, pry off the cover carefully because the bottom cover is a little sharp there on the edges. And here's the battery taking up a lot of space as is true for most laptops and pretty good sized speaker drivers over here. And we have two M.2 SSD slots and they are under copper heat sinks. Nice that Dell includes those. We only have a drive on one side and you get the second heat sink anyway. So it's there for you and ready in case you do an upgrade. Pretty large fans on board and they're flanking two RAM slots here under these Mylar covers. And again, you can go up to 64 gigs of RAM in theory, DDR5, both of those there. And this is the vapor chamber, and they still use that Gore-Tex or Gore coating to try to make it less, well, toasty on your lap. And the Gore coating is actually on the underside of the lid here. What helps with rigidity even more than the fact this is a rigid chassis, chassis is that noticeably two standoffs over here to make sure the chassis stays rigid. The Wi-Fi card, which is a killer card, which is technically actually an Intel AX211 Wi-Fi 6E card with Bluetooth 5, right here soldered on, so it's a keeper. The speakers on this are 2.5 watt stereo speakers, two of them. They're better than average. They're pretty loud. They actually have some bass, so well done there, Dell for multimedia. For biometrics, you have a fingerprint scanner and you have a Windows Hello IR camera. It's only 720p, so you're going to be, you know, your basic business potato cam kind of look on screen. Keyboard's unchanged and the trackpad's unchanged. Large Microsoft Precision trackpad, no complaints there. And the usual keyboard without a number pad. I know some of you complain on a big laptop, why no number pad? But that's so they can have those big up-firing speakers and helps them sound so good. Anyway, key travel as ever with XPS models is very short. It's not that uncomfortable in this though. It's more tactile. They got a little bit more room to work with, I think. So I actually like this better than the XPS 13 keyboard, for example. It doesn't feel as jarring on your finger joints. It's, it's fine. Connectivity, well, here we go again. I'll once again say sometimes you just shouldn't copy Apple when they're making mistakes, like having no so-called legacy ports on board. So we're still here with Thunderbolt 4 ports only. Yeah, you do have a headphone jack. Okay, so there's that. And because it's for creatives, it has a full-size SD card slot as well. Okay, so the 16-inch MacBook Pro improved things a little bit. Really, what did they add that this doesn't have just the HDMI port? So I'd like to see USB-A, but happily there's a little dongle in the box. So you put the little dongle on and then you've got both HDMI and a USB-A port. That is life with the XPS line now and the price we pay for things being so thin and fashionable. So battery life on this, 97 watt hour battery. That is a huge battery. And we have the magical USB-C 130 watt charger. I say that because usually USB-C chargers top out at 100 watts. So Dell did a little special sauce here to crank it up to 130 watts. They've been doing that for a while. Uh, like I said, battery life is really gonna depend on which display you get. The 4K Plus is awesome to look at. It's great for creators doing photo and video editing, but you're gonna take a several hour hit on battery life there. So for us, ours was doing about five and a half hours with brightness set to 200 nits and a mix of light productivity work and streaming video. If you're doing something heavier, obviously it will be shorter. If you're doing something that engages the RTX graphics on this, um, like using Blender, or something or playing a game expect shorter battery life in our tests most of the time the dedicated graphics were not engaged if you go with that full hd plus display dell claims around 11 hours they're usually not wildly over optimistic so i would say that maybe 
eight or nine hours I would expect from it. That's my educated guess from reviewing previous models. I have not tested the full HD Plus model. So that's the Dell XPS 17 for 2022 with Intel 12th generation inside. Five and a half pounds of fairly powerful, chic mobile workstation, high end kind of experience, right? So this is for those of you who are looking for sort of a mobile workstation and something very classy. You like the unibody aluminum build, that carbon fiber interior, all that sort of thing. You're paying for the classiness, the excellent display. Performance happens to be quite good. The thermals are quite reasonable on this as well. So, I mean, I'm not dissing it by saying it's a pretty face in the crowd, but obviously for something that can hit about $3,000 like this, you're part paying for the cosmetics and the rock solid build quality. I would not want to drop this on my foot. This is the most rigid laptop wow on the market. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and also hit the notification bell because how would you know about them otherwise?